And what are we jamming on now? Jay, what are you jamming on now? All right. For the last time, you'll probably hear me talk about it. Outriders. I, I think I'm done with it. Like, yeah. I've, long, I've long since beat the main story, all the side quests, the, the side expeditions. Like, I've gotten, like... Isn't the multi not, thing the fucking isn't the like isn't 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 it like procedurally generated almost with the multiplayer stuff? Well, the multiplayer stuff it's cool, but it's like like they have these expeditions that you have to get like progressively harder to get better gear. And you we I've done that. Like, I've gotten to the highest tier of that. So there's like only one final thing, which is like the eye of the storm. And it says that content is reserved for groups. And so, like, I tr- I've tried it, and I just I clearly I can't do it by myself. And <laughs> I, I try to, like, queue in and wait for somebody to join me and just, like, not start the mission and just wait for somebody to, like, just match make. And so that happened once, and we both failed, and they left. So I was like, darn it. Like, I need to, like, if I don't have, like, a team with me to do this together, like, it's not going to happen. So, but otherwise, I'm, like, done with the game. Like, I'm bored doing the same exhibitions over and over. I've done them a ton of times. I've gotten, like, all legendary gear so unless they come out with some dlcs i think i'm done uh, i think it's pretty uh, reliable that they will do that <laughs> <laughs> we'll see i'm i'm over it in the meantime though like it's just the replayability i've, I've played it out i think it's done sure. and then after that oh man man eater so i don't know if you remember this game shark game it's a shark like action rpg it's so fun so story time buckle in <laughs> about a year ago right before the series x and s were released obviously i work at microsoft i was testing i was one of the testers working playing the series s before it came out so i'm like playing this new software before everybody else i'm like i'm loving it and internally i also got to test this game the series x version of this game and so i was loving this game clearly i can talk about it on the podcast at the time you know because it was just under development but you're a shark. It's an RPG. You're underwater. You're you have to level up. You're getting things. The graphics well, you are, are the amazing. shark. You I, I are yeah. the shark. Yeah, remember, yeah. Like, I, I saw this. Yeah, I remember seeing. Yeah, this. but like I feel like they made the it was at the time, like the shark and underwater graphics were really stellar and really realistic, but like the humans and above ground was a very cartoony. It was like an interesting contrast. Right. But this time they made those more realistic, so it makes more sense. On I think. But like it's on Game Pass now, and amazingly enough, even though I'm playing on like my own Series X now, like my soft my game was automatically loaded, so I was still like an adult shark on my progress, and the graphics are amazing. Like it's just a blast. So I highly, highly recommend. Man, you're an apex predator. Like it's something different. Uh, yeah, I'm, I remember being intrigued by it for sure. And yeah, it's it's I can only imagine the amount of like thought that went behind like how realistic. Should we make this? <laughs> you know, like with that being the motif, and yeah, like you're, you know, because you're eating like innocent bystanders, essentially, right? And it's not, yeah, they're not like. That's not you know, your whole goal, but that's definitely, definitely part, part of it. Part of it, right? Yeah. Goals, yeah. Yeah, so that's interesting that they, they, they it definitely intrigues me more that it's skewed more towards realism for sure. If I'm going to play a game like that, yeah, I'm like, uh, I don't know, it's hard to say. Like I mean, like I said, I was intrigued even when it was cartoony. So, mm-hmm. yeah, but I never, I never got on playing it. That's cool. But it's Game Pass, so there you go. Now, yeah, I'll have to. <laughs> I just downloaded another one. I, just, I mean, I, I fucking in the middle of this thing. I can't even kind of have time. I haven't even touched Subnautica, let alone anything else. Uh, but I was listening to a podcast a day or two ago, and they mentioned something that I was like, "Oh, that is that's oh, I got to try." Like, just download it for later. It's saved, <laughs> so I don't forget about ah. it. You know, so I'll probably I'll probably do that with that. Yeah. Nice, nice. So yeah. Uh... And then, of course, I gotta say, as you can see from my background, shockingly, Rocket League. Have you played this game before? Like, how, what is your experience is it, with this? Is this the thing that you were? Is this is this not the thing that you were saying? Like the the, the dodge volley thing? I'm assuming no, right? No, no. no so no, no. that was that's Knockout City, knockout and City. that that's a blast. I, I I still play that from time to time with uh, Zion. But so on a whim. I downloaded this. I can't remember because it's something I've heard about. Clearly, this is a game that's been around Rocket League. It's it's basically soccer. It's kind of like, okay, the website describes it as high-powered hybrid of arcade-style soccer and vehicular mayhem. (laughs) So it's kind of like a car version of Griffball from Halo 5, which I don't know if you remember. I've talked about it, but it's kind of like something that I said should be an eSport. I was like, it's so fun. This should be an eSport. 
this is an esport. It's basically that only with a car. And I played it with Z- Zeke and Zion, and like you're on a team. Like we did three versus three. Obviously, you're ha- trying to knock the ball in the goal. You have like boost in the game. You can do jumps. Like it's shockingly fun. Like we were all just surprised. Like, it, <laughs> but in the game, like it has its own tab that says esports. Like that's how you know it's like a big time thing. But it's just I, I can't say enough about it. Like it's couch co op. It's one of those things where I'd seen it before and I'm like, yeah, whatever. It's not really my style, but I played it and it's a blast. It's on my home screen now. Just has the right mechanics. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, It's just really fun. And I haven't, I could like, that's something I wouldn't mind having. It's like, just like a game I can just fuck around and play. So I don't have, you know, it's either Subnautica or, which is like a a completely immersive, all consuming, Mm -hmm. like, uh, fucking rat hitting the lever experience you know going out with the resource gathering and stuff and building and shit so having something a little more mindless would be nice <laughs> this is fun it's it's really fun i highly recommend and i think it's i think it's one of those free-to-play games i'm pretty sure so cool yep word word that's about it man what about you what have you been jamming on uh Nothing for the last week, but prior to that, Subnautica is all, as you might imagine. Like, I mean, it's just it's further and deeper. Uh, the story keeps getting better. Like, I I hit a point where it tied into, so I think I told you previously that, you know, it's completely, it happens in the same story world as uh, the first one, but... It's a completely, you know, like the character, there's no over, or seemed, there was seemingly no overlap at all. And I don't know what, you know, again, they don't give you percentages, thankfully, but I'm, I'm assuming at least halfway through it, probably. And I, I hit a, like, I, I got to a point where it tied into the first game story in a, like a really, really unexpected and obscure way, you know, where like, you know, I'd even, be, I'd bumped into this thing. This this aspect of 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 this of the second one story a couple of times and I didn't even it didn't even occur to me and then the right clue popped up in addition to a new bump into it and I was like oh my fucking god that's that oh my god that's so fucking good holy shit <laughs> so like yeah like I mean it it took every smidge of self control I possess to not late night phone call jab on the telephone and gush about it like. <laughs> Like it was so fucking good. I just oh, I, mean, I was like, I had to like put the controller down. I was like, oh my god, that is such good writing. That's so fucking good. Holy shit. Holy shit. Holy shit. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so fucking cool. Uh, so yeah, so that happened. And, yeah, that and like you know, if, if like, I don't know, if, I, I don't know how I could fucking be any more over the moon about it than than I already was. But that that uh, absolutely did it for me. Uh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm said it before. I'll stress it again. Anyone who hasn't played these games, your existence is lesser for it. Like. It is. They are fucking unreal. Even Jab, he's such a cunt. Have I ever told you how much of a cunt Jab is? <laughs> he's like, so he's, yeah, I mean, you, I, I think on some of the side quests or something, I I'm, have zero doubt that you've had some exposure since I started playing this to him being like, no, nah, I don't know about it. I've heard it's kind of weak, yada, yada, yada. And like, you know, so he, I don't know if it was like a week ago, a few days ago or something over the, over last weekend or something, he was watching a friend's dog. So he's staying at their house and I got a bunch of dough, I guess. So they got this, so they have a sick ass, uh, gaming desktop at the, at the house. And he had Subnautica. So he's like, he texts me late, late night one night. And he's just like, he's got, he's got the screenshot. It's up. And he's like, just the very beginning of it. And of sub zero. And, He's, it's, he's like, he's like, my, you know, explain the story that he got like this sick ass computer. So he's just fucking around with it. I was like, oh, so you're playing. He's like, oh, I'm just like literally just dipping my toe in because it's here, you know. So he like plays it a little bit and he like said something about, like he made some shitty remark about like the tone of an early joke or something, you know, in the writing. And so talking a little bit of shit and he's like, but you know, we like, I was like, asked how far he got. I was like, oh, I never got the shallows. I just did this and that. Yeah. And then like, Two or three days ago, he texts me. He's back at home. He's he he's he's bought a PC now, and he's got he's got it set up. And Sub Zero's on the screen, and he's playing. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, "Oh, you're fucking playing now?" He's like, "He's like, yeah, 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 yeah." And then like last night, he's sending me like long texts of like role playing shit he's doing. How he's like, 
his whole like plan for his new his first starter base of like how he's limiting himself so he doesn't get entrenched in the early base so he moves quicker than he like he doesn't allow himself to get too established in the shallows with this base uh like you know no 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 only building the one room no no plants are growing any sort of sustenance so like basically pushing himself to build a base somewhere better sooner than you might if you build something that really provides uh, sustenance or whatever uh, in in the shallows, you know. So basically, the point is he's completely immersed, completely fucking gone, <laughs> and like just gone, you know. He's like the fucking just like completely gone. He's fucking like goodbye. Like he's gonna be fucking playing the game nonstop now for months. And like you know, he was such, he was being such a twat about it. And how he's like, I'm gonna wait till winter. I mean, part of his inclination was that he's like, I didn't, I don't want to, like, I don't want this to happen, you know. Like yeah. I don't want, I don't want to fall off the deep end on it because like, whatever he's. So busy, but the like, like, yeah, the second he fucking got exposure to, he was like, boop, gone. <laughs> so, case in point, I mean, granted, it, like, you know, it's not like he needed to be swayed to like the game or anything, but uh, certainly, I, it's, it's some level of demonstration of, of, of this one being good, at least as good as the first, because the second he got into it, he was gone, you know? <laughs> so, so, yeah, it's just so fucking good. Uh, yeah, and the other thing, the other that I, I I haven't played yet. I literally just set it to download yesterday morning before I left for work. But uh, I heard I I I, like, I always thought No Man's Sky was just another FPS. Like I'd heard that name a million times. Do you know anything about that game? I have not played it. I think I downloaded it, but like never messed around with it. But like it's huge. Yeah, that's that. Yeah, that's what I was. Uh, I was actually listening to the Press B to Cancel podcast. Now that I think about it, and it was it was on the list of. One of the guys' worst five games list. I think it was like number four on his list. So he like he like it was a funny list because the, uh, the 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 fourth and fifth games on his list, he was like, you have to play now. <laughs> Cause like his whole thing was with this game, when it first came out, I guess it was it promised all these things and didn't fulfill any of them. Mm-hmm. But it's and it's from this indie developer that has like supported the shit out of it over the its entire lifespan and now it is like i guess an unreal game that fulfills all the things that it was supposed to fulfill but yeah it, it's essentially it sounds to me like a procedurally generated space exploration game so like you go to planets and there is unique life on every planet. And that was this thing. Like early on, he said there wasn't the kind of variance that it promised and yada, yada, yada. But procedurally generated. So essentially, it is like the universe. It is infinite. <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, if you believe the universe is infinite, I guess. And perhaps that's some level of uh, <laughs> we don't have proof of that necessarily. But yeah, like the yeah, it's it's like it sounds like kind of outer worldsy, but way bigger, you know. Uh, and there's also, I guess, a multiplayer component to it that could be kind of interesting. Like the, the like you, like it, it, it. Again, I haven't played it, so I, um, this is purely on like interpretation of analysis by someone else. But like, like one of the gripes was that you couldn't see, like you, like it was multiplayer in that at these all the players could exist in the universe together, and you could cross paths in like your the trail that you leave behind you, your wake, I guess. You know, but you would never see, you could never see another player. Like there's no, there was no way to like be in the same place at the same time, I guess, you know? Um, so I don't, I don't even know exactly what that, I guess that's been fixed. They kind of uh, alluded to that being fixed and it's possible now to bump into other people, I guess, in the multiplayer aspect of it. But even the idea that you have this like massive universe and like, I don't know that there's some level of like residual evidence of other players having been here, finding their base. I don't even, I don't even know what it means. You know, again, I like it. They, they did not really get into the mechanic. I don't even know what your goal is based on what they were talking about. It was just, they were talking about the, again, the procedural, the procedurally generated aspect of it and like how, you know, the, the, the world, the, the planets and the life, like there's life forms, you know, unique life forms to the planet, of course, that has developed on that individual planet. And theoretically, there is an infinite version of infinite versions of what that can be on the planet. You know, it's just, it's fucking, it's a crazy concept. It's like a mind blowing concept. I can't even wrap my mind around the concept of it. <laughs> Within- so actually, now that you mentioned it, first of all, I did not know about the procedurally generated thing, yeah. but I have heard of this because one of the guys that used to be in our old ESO guild um, that we, we 
started playing Divinity with, he played that game a lot. And he actually he created like a Facebook page. I think it was called like One Man Sky. And it was like his like stuff that he found. And I remember thinking like, why is this game so good? So I actually did. I just looked at something. I did play it, but I didn't really know what the goal was. I didn't really look into it. <laughs> that's that's kind so of kind of like, what are we yeah. doing here? Like, right. Yeah. So that's I, kind I, of I that's how it sounded. And and like that's honestly what intrigues me. Like I mean, that's you know that's one of the things I love about Subnautica, and that's what's cool about Outer Worlds is like, you know, you just dropped into this. It's it's it is kind of just a sandbox. There's something like. There's a difference between like you can there are sandbox games that truly don't have a goal like mm-hmm. and it's a completely different thing to have a sandbox world and tell the player or have the pl- expectation for the player be to find what they're finding you know what I mean that that's that that's just a level a, a, a layer of role play I guess or fucking gamey whatever it's just I love that you know that's why open world games Skyrim anything like I want to I want to I want to decide and find what the hell my character is going to do with their time, existence, whatever. That's the whole, that's that's very intriguing to me in a, in a gaming sense. So, Then uh, you would probably love this then. Because yeah. you know, <laughs> from from what, what I saw from him, it was kind of just like this, you're exploring the universe. Like, I don't <laughs> even know what else is going on there. Like, right, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's fucking awesome. So, yeah, that, I'm looking, I mean, you know, clearly, I don't know, especially like so if it's something that expansive, like I'm kind of scared to even try to play it before I get Subnautica. Oh, yeah. Because, you, you know, how do you find the time for that? But <laughs> I want to wait, honestly. Now, and it's funny because talking about this game, I remember on the Discord that I use, I'm on the Gamers Over 30 Discord. I don't really talk to a lot of people there. It's kind of like, it, it's all right. But I noticed they have like, because each popular game has its own channel. channel. So there's maybe like, I don't know, 12, 15 channels. But No Man's Sky itself has like eight different channels or something like that. There's just a lot for that one game. So I remember thinking like, wow, people are really into this game. But it didn't really register like that. Yeah, this yeah, is it's, reason. It, it sounds like such a, yeah, it just sounds like one of those stock fucking FPS games that I just would have no interest in, you know, that the title is not. It, it, that's the thing. Like now that I know this, like yeah, it makes that's a great title. But, <laughs> but but like with no context or no further, like I don't know. Even the visual, just again, kind of looks like a Halo thing or something. You know, it's like three dudes standing on a. You know, it looks like. I mean, I, I guess I don't think they're holding guns. Maybe so. Maybe I wasn't. I didn't pay close enough attention. But I don't know. Yeah, it just looked to me like just another one of those games. You know, uh, so um, bad job of marketing, perhaps. But sounds fucking awesome, and can't wait to play it.